uh, gave a couple of examples of companies that successfully did that. And some of them, the cast off actually ended up, you know, acquiring the, the original mothership. <laughs> so it, it's like, Send, send off the little space pod to go and find civilization because the spaceship's not going to get there, you know? Exactly. Yep. This is Super Fast Business with James Schramko. James Schramko. Helping you build your business super fast. Fast. Mm. James Schramko here. Welcome back to superfastbusiness.com. Today, I'm speaking with Matthew Burns from depulse.com and we're talking about project management and task management and some of the tools involved in that. So, I'd like to welcome to the call, Matthew. Thank you so much, James. Very happy to be here. Well, it's uh, great to have you here and it's a topic that is often discussed in our community. Most people uh, listening to this podcast have their own business or mm -hmm. still running their own business and working for someone else, somewhere in, that, in one of those two buckets. And one of the things that happens as they grow their own business is they, firstly, they, they find they need to manage themselves better. So that whole self-effectiveness is a topic that comes up a lot for us. Yeah, absolutely. And the the second thing is inevitably you just get to a certain point where you can't go much further unless you hire a team and you start having people coordinate with you with your business. So they're two of the major areas where I see this tools topic pop up, and uh, we've we've hear a lot of names coming up all the time and no doubt you'd be familiar with most of them and then you're with Depulse which is another tool that's in the mix there. So some examples, mm -hmm. in our business over the last 10 years we would have tried a lot of different systems. We've used everything from uh, Basecamp which is a pretty popular tool and Teamwork, yep. uh, Trello which seems by far and away the, the most popular one we hear about mm. and we haven't tried but we're familiar with Podio and we've tried Rike and of course Google Docs is a mainstay yeah. in, in the back of our system there and then as a as a task management and these things are sort of slightly separate project management and task management mm -hmm. tried lots of different tools there from the the reminders app in the Apple to to just notes to Google Docs to pieces of paper post-it notes, whiteboards, and yeah. it, it really fascinates me how there's so many different tools, but I've never really found uh, many that, that seem to naturally gel with the way that humans work. Almost all of them tend to be a place where stuff gets dumped, mm -hmm. and then we are still doing what we're going to do anyway, and then we go and retrospectively look at the tool to see you know what we did and then move the blocks around, and, and in some cases... One of the most incredible discoveries I made with our team when yeah. in the early days we were using Basecamp, the team would go on and update Basecamp and then and simultaneously they were running a Google document in the background where they were actually coordinating things. And then I asked them, why are you, why are you updating Basecamp if you're using Google? They said, oh, that, well, that's for you, boss. <laughs> like, well, that's not the point of the tool, <laughs> you know. Partially, it's great. It's great as the business owner to know at a glance uh, where yeah. your business is at, and I think that's where the the power in Trello has been so popular because it, mm -hmm. it's got a Kanban system, which is simply like a you know a card system or to do, doing, and done for for those who don't know. Yeah, and it's it's more of a visual indicator of where things yeah. are at and migrating. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's also great if the tool actually encourages and helps productivity. Uh, that that the tool itself is contributing to that. So on a on a lightweight level, I've seen that work really well with tools like Todoist, but some of them aren't beefy enough to deal with multiple people in a team, mm -hmm. and they don't bring in the elements of Kanban. And it seems to me that Depulse, which is spelt D A P U L S E, uh, and we'll we'll also have a special listener offer on that. So if you're interested in it. I'll send. I'll put a link in the show notes to our review of Depulse. Seems to me that Depulse is kind of a mashup between some of the favorite tools that I've used. It seems to have the the listability of, say, a Google Doc spreadsheet. It has the mm -hmm. uh, the ability to create columns to move things around, like a Trello board, 
And it also, it's very easy to add and to, to tick off things like Todoist. So when you're coming up with a, a, an idea for a tool like this, how do you wade into such a minefield and what sort of things are considerations for you as you go in there? Like, I'm sure you have to consider who your perfect target market is. We may maybe start there. Yeah, it's actually really interesting that you bring that up. To kind of touch on what you mentioned in the very beginning in regards to the, the myriad of different tools that are available out there, the thing that stood out to me most about Depulse was the focus on the people. And you and I were just talking about that earlier. Having come from the consulting world and done doing lots of different consulting with lots of different businesses, it does seem like everybody has this sort of Frankenstein's monster of collections of tools, tasks, paper, and everything that can just get completely unmanageable very quickly. And when you start with these new tools, the promises and everything sounds fantastic. But it gets ridiculously overwhelming very quickly, like you said, when people just go in and dump something and they don't take care of it immediately or they don't keep track of what's going on there. So when it comes to creating Depulse and kind of what we ended up using, the analogy that I like to use is is like if you stuck Facebook and an Excel spreadsheet in a blender and the, the project management milkshake that came out ended up being Depulse. And uh, with a focus on people, that's made it really strong and really resonating. As you as you mentioned earlier, having this huge repository of things can get so intimidating. And what Depulse really focuses on, it's not really about the tasks. It's not even really about project management. It's about people. And it's about utilizing the startup's most valuable resource, which is a person. You know, going from one person to two person to two people in a company is the the largest change that you will probably make in your business. And so when you start working collectively as a team, communication is just so pivotal. And that's what really resonates with uh, everybody when they first start to use Depulse is they see the focus and the emphasis on communication. And uh, as we like to say, going green, when we have projects set up and you want to move tasks along and make sure that they go from start to finish and keep track of that appropriately. So that's kind of what I vision as, as what's working really well about Depulse and what works well when you think about what kind of things to create for a different project management platform. Yeah, I can see that team element because as I started using it uh, with one other person in my business, I started to get to feel that it's almost encroaching on Slack for its ability to communicate with each other. I really like how you can have a chat with someone on a task mm -hmm. and that uh, when you combine that with the app, it's actually pretty easy to have a communication. And obviously, every good project management tool is going to have an app where it's it's quite portable because as business owners, we're accessing our business from the mobile phone and mm -hmm. our customers are there too these days. So, it's, it's an essential thing. But I like how you can have that communication and you can pretty much set up the, the boards, which you call them, into uh, different folders. So, you can – you could – pretty much replicate a, a chat channel if you wanted to. I, I could imagine for a very small business exactly, or a medium-sized business, they might be able to use Depulse to replace a lot of other tools. It could be a, a solution that gets them by. I think you, you sell up to a, it's a five-seat license for the entry level. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's correct, yeah. And you can now have external people sharing boards as well, so external contractors, et cetera, and they, they count for a fraction of a license. Exactly. That's correct, yeah. So you can have guests come in. So if you're an e-commerce business, uh, an advertising agency, if you're ever working with people that are outside of your company that but are critical to moving a project forward, you can create a shareable board, which allows you to actually invite them as guests, and they can come in and be part of the team only in that space. So they wouldn't have access to your main area where all of the pertinent company company information is, but they would still be able to work with you on that project and you'd be able to hold each other accountable for the stuff going forward. Yeah. So in terms of simple versus complex, I, I guess I, I reckon it some, sits somewhere on the it's on it's somewhere in the middle to me. It's it's not the it's simple to use, but it's quite complex in the feature set that it has. And it's it's got the, the power that I need at least for moving things across from one side of the the scale to the other. If you want to use it as a project management tool to go through gateways, it's pretty easy to, to create customizable columns, to allocate it to any person. I love the ability to change the status 
by color. It's super visual, mm -hmm. which is where it's, it really steps up above a task list or a, a, just a checklist type yes. system in the fact that you can have an immediate sense of where projects are at, especially if someone else is involved with it. And I think it might be interesting to talk about how different scenarios might use this tool because there's a chance that someone listening to this is, is one of a certain type of business. So a lot of our audience will fall into the following categories. They'll either be an agency dealing with end users and maybe suppliers. They will probably be an information product marketer mm -hmm. where that's some form of creating information or affiliate marketing. They could be an e-commerce business or they're very likely to be a coach of some kind. So that's, uh, you know, I guess you'd categorize that as a personal services type business. I might, I might just sort of start with the coaching side of things because that's sort of what our business is now. We're super fast business mm -hmm. and silver circle. We're helping business owners grow their business and become far more profitable. And I've been using Depulse more as a task manager than a, than a project management tool, I think, but I'm sharing it with one other person in my business who is helping me drive the business. They, they, they help me drive me. <laughs> and that's probably mm -hmm. uh, pretty typical for uh, a, a driven entrepreneur, even though I have good compliance to follow through and an yeah. and, and understanding of disciplines and numbers, etc. I still get some real assistance by having someone um, jockey some of the tasks with me. And they're also able to interface with the rest of the team. So, we created a little codec within our business that right. aside from the traditional, you know, red, yellow, green boxes, we've used uh, purple ones, which indicate that it's someone else in our team we're waiting on. And then we have blue for an external contractor. So we can see where a project is out there in the wide world, but it's a very, very private depulse that we're sharing. It's just the two of us. And I've set up my folders into into separate categories for things like super fast business and silver circle and uh, other cool stuff like uh, training. In our business, professional development is essential. So, I have a, a training board mm -hmm. where if I buy a course or I download a PDF or I listen to an audio, I'll put it on my training board and then I'll, you know, make it go green and I'll just, ch ch you know, just get through training material as a discipline. And I've also created a master templates folder now. And what I've been doing is yeah. creating templates for everything from setting up and running a membership through to setting up revenue share deals, creating good webinars, writing good sales letters, mm -hmm. and a start to finish project stream of a, of a project from the, the whole way through. And, and I'm able to just drag or duplicate those into new folders when I start a project. So I could just basically get going on my task list. Yeah, and I think having having the ability for templates is an essential feature in, in a project management tool. Get a foundation. Now, yep. notice there's also a, a project, there's a board that's actually private that only you can see and I think that's a nice feature to have as well because there are some things that aren't necessarily uh, good for everyone else to see. Exactly, yeah. So, we, we definitely have a, a great structure in that regard. And um, to touch on how uh, a coach would be using this specifically, and then to use maybe private boards versus main boards, uh, you know, we created Depulse with the idea of transparency. But like you said, sometimes you don't want to have all of that information be available for everyone or you want it to be available for certain people. So, and some examples that I've actually spoken with some uh, coaching coaching clients of ours, people who are coaches that use Depulse, uh, there's quite a few. And one of the ways that I see them using this very successfully is actually in uh, they kind of create their SOPs based around how they build their boards. So like standard operating procedures. And what they do is when they have somebody come in through their sales funnel, be it through a webinar or something like that, and they're becoming they're in the process of becoming a client. Um, I have coaches who are working in all kinds of fields. Often they might be in coaching in internet marketing or business development. And so there's a lot of different processes that have to happen uh, to get somebody going. It's not like you can just flip a switch and suddenly it's there. Uh, that would be more for an e-commerce company, but we can talk about that in a second. So when coaches actually get people set up, what I find them often doing is creating shareable boards where they actually have their clients become part of the project. And that's really huge because you know when you're a coach, uh, you live and die by making sure that you can provide value to your clients, but also have the process of acquiring new clients go smoothly. So when you have your templates set up where you're doing sales and onboarding and you actually have 
clients come in and be part of that onboarding. You could create shareable boards. And what many coaches are doing is they're actually having them join them on there. So rather than getting a thousand emails saying, where's this at? How's this setup going? You know, if they're doing SEO or something like that, they're saying, well, where, what, when do I get my keywords? When do I, when do I actually start looking at these backlinks? You can actually have them see, like you said, very visually, okay, you can log into Pulse at any time, see where your project's at. If you want to get an update, you can ask for one. But all that information will be there and available for them. So I often find coaches, aside from, of course, working with their team to make sure projects go from A to Z, they're actually able to pull in and involve other people who aren't necessarily part of their company, such as clients and things like that, which we find them really finding a lot of value in. Yeah, that's great. So it's good for... Uh, a service industry if you're going to be back and forth at a high level with the customer then you can actually just drag a template across that steps all the things that have to happen as a fulfillment of that service Mm -hmm. and then the customer can see where you're at and you're on the same page at all times exactly yeah and so like with an e-commerce company, for uh, example, I've actually had some good conversations with people who are in the e-commerce space and using to pulse well. And to touch on another thing that you mentioned earlier about simple versus complex, one of the funny things that I often think about somebody told me when they were describing to pulse one time is that you can go from the simple to the complex on a person to person basis. So for example, you have people who really just, they need to get information, they need to understand it, but they're not maybe as tech savvy, but they're part of your company. It's important that they be involved in this project with you. You can't just shut them out. They might not be a developer, maybe they're in HR or something like that where they're not often using project management. Well, they could still be involved and still use it. And the uh, business owner told me that he was very excited that he didn't have to take the Ferrari to the grocery store, but he could if he wanted to. And so you could go and actually make things complex and, and use them that way if you need to. But it's very simple to, to go in and understand. And so an example that I have with an e-commerce company that I was having a conversation with a couple of weeks ago is they were actually plugging into the API of Depulse, which we make available. And you can go in there and actually sync up different programs and integrate with Depulse. So they're actually able to go in through Shopify. Uh, we have other people who actually have custom programs that they hook up to their Depulse and they're able to go in and actually keep track of different orders. They're able to keep track of new products. If you're, uh, if you're actually going through and making, sh- making products that uh, they need to go through a creation phase and you need to get them into production, you can keep track of things there and actually work with manufacturers through the shareable boards, kind of like how we talked about with the coaching involving the clients. So you could do the same thing with other people such as manufacturers or anybody else that's a big part of your business in that way. So we see e-commerce companies seeing a lot of value in that regards too. And I thought that touched on well with the simple versus the complex, which we discussed earlier. Yeah, actually thinking about it, some of my boards have five columns across them. And for example, in a, a things to promote board, I'll have I'll allocate a person to the project. There'll be a, a, a cart slash link. So I need an affiliate link. Then there'll be an offer page ready. Mm-hmm. And then there'll be off a page checked, you know, we double check it and check the links, then there'll be a promote now, and then there'll be an end. And that way we can just look at that one board for seven or eight things or a promotional calendar, if you like, is the easy way to explain it. And you can see yeah. where something's bogged down. I can see that some things are waiting for a link, some things are waiting for the offer page, and two of them are being promoted right now, and then at some point they'll end. And that helps... Uh, our people who are sending the emails out know what call to action to put in the email without having to ask me, the the business owner, because it's there on a page that is viewable by someone in the business. Exactly. And Uh, and then there are other ones like my work in progress, um, which is just the most simple one-column task list ever. It's just red, yellow, green. (laughs) And in fact, what I've done is I've created a completed Mm -hmm. group of pulses, I think you call them. Yep. And when I complete something, I actually shift it out of the work in progress and off to the completed board. So I've got an archive of everything that was done and I'm only really looking at reds and yellows. So it's, it's a simple way to keep my focus on stuff that needs to be done. I'm not even looking at the stuff that was done, but if I need to go and check something that was done, I've got this entire history of all the greens everything that's been done so uh, one of the most effective techniques we can do in our business is to keep doing what works yeah so it's nice to have a 
recurring reminder to go and review what you've done and then retrospectively figure out which were the power moves, which one had the most impact and which one should we put back into our future or on a recurring basis. Exactly, yeah. Now, there are things like synchronizing with your calendar and setting dates for things, I noticed. Exactly, yes. And we've actually got a, a really big improvement, at least at the time of this recording. We're very close to launching a brand new internal timeline uh, that should, it's, uh, we like to say that we're revolutionizing things and it is pretty, it is pretty different than anything that you've seen. So uh, we're very excited about that. We're testing it internally and it actually turns people into kind of like a Gantt style chart where you can actually look at the scope of a project person by person. So you could see where there's gaps for availability for people to take on more weight than others, or if somebody's particularly o- overloaded between lots of different tasks. So we're really, really excited about that timeline feature, which is coming out very soon. And um, and, and like you said earlier as well, with the uh, ability to see everything at a glance, um, it's it's so powerful, at least for for me, the reason that, that I became a believer, uh, to be able to instantly sit down and just at a glance know exactly where you need to be on a certain project. Uh, I'm sure many of your listeners, uh, having been one myself, I know that sometimes you come in on Monday or whenever it is that you're you're sitting down to things and you're sitting there staring at your computer and you've got a thousand emails and you're like, where do I even start? Um, and for me, myself, what I like to do is actually I, I go in and search for everything that was completed so I can understand where I've been at. And then I go and look at things that were stuck on certain days. So you can actually go in and search and allocate those things. And as somebody who's working in a bigger project, it's so valuable for people who are also working on a team to immediately be able to understand, all right, here's all the things that are on this project that are stuck or even company wide. Here's everything that we're working on that we need to focus on today, because that's the most important thing, right? As a business owner, you're, you want to focus on what works and what works is making sure that nothing gets bottlenecked. Uh, I, you know, the horror of realizing that something has been left undone for a week, two weeks, maybe even a month because stuff just goes unnoticed. It, it, get, it gets missed. Those are the kind of things that we're really striving to, to work against because we want people to feel comfortable to be able to go into a tool for one, but also to be you know transparent and make things simple so that they can actually focus on what they need to be focusing on rather than the overwhelming, the overwhelming appearance of an inbox with, with hundreds of emails waiting to be answered. So that's that's really what we want to be focusing on is is making sure that the most valuable resource, which is the person, understands exactly what they need to be doing at that moment in time. Yeah, that's a good point, Matthew. And I think it's important for people who travel a lot, as I do, that you can get a, an idea of where you're up to at any time. So again, when, when you are traveling, mm-hmm. you start to burn a lot of energy starting to uh, switch time zones, ch- understand different languages, currencies, cultures, accommodation, f- even finding food becomes a high priority. And then if you have to, you know, if you're in a classroom or a learning environment, then your regular business just gets pushed to the outer peripheral of your awareness. And it's nice to be able to just look at an app or even when you come back and tune back into business to be able to just go, uh-huh, mm-hmm. uh-huh, uh-huh, okay, this is where we're at with everything and to recalibrate. Exactly. I think a lot of a lot of the energy is lost being an entrepreneur when you are balancing that that seesaw of consuming more you know, innovation and information to take you to the next stage, like like listening to podcasts and attending events and going through trainings versus creating and you know, doing the work, catching up with the things you've already put in your notebook, keeping projects moving forward at a pace because there is an opportunity cost for, for your time and if, if things do bog down, if that website takes another month to put a a topic chooser on the homepage so that you can segment people in the first opt-in that that could yep. have a, that could cost you a million dollars a year yeah. yeah for not having that so it's it's really kind of important to to be able to tag those things to someone and to have them clear on what they're doing as well and that's one of the the great things about a tool like this Exactly. You were, you were talking in your last podcast actually about knowing your numbers and how important it is to actually go in and understand. And what we're really trying to do is is help you know your business. Because uh, I, a, a funny story that I have is when I was uh, doing some consulting. You know, I'm sure a lot of a lot of uh, nomads and entrepreneurs out there have gone traveling and not necessarily 
had the best processes in place. And I was gone for two weeks and I had my team handling things for me. And for the most part, it went very smooth. But when I came back, I was using uh, another tool. <laughs> and uh, when I came back to go back into the tool, I had, uh, I think it was like 470 different notifications. And I, I stared at my screen for a second and then just shut it off. And I had to come back because I was the immense pressure of trying to understand where everything was at at that moment. Just I was starting to hyperventilate. And, uh, you know, like when you're traveling, like you said, there's so much energy that needs to be taken into understanding where you're at at any one time. And you can miss key things, which could cost, which could affect your bottom line. So being able to instantly go in and say, oh, I understand right away exactly where I need to be and what I need to be focusing on because everybody else in the process knows that too. I had, uh, when I was overseas and I came back, people were waiting for me to answer on things that I didn't even know that they had asked me about because I had missed the information in my in my slew of emails. So now being on Depulse and having the joy of, uh, of an inbox zero every day, which I can easily work towards, is just, uh, it's, it's magical. And so that's why we're really excited to share this uh, with you and your team and with, of course, everybody on the Super Fast Business Podcast. Yeah, getting out of your inbox is essential. It's the, the power moves I help people with when they scale are uh, getting a help desk that's external from them. Like the, the business owner managing their own support mm-hmm. is usually the first thing that detonates. Get their, get the team out of the inbox, which is the next thing. And that's where we've we got a huge, <laughs> uh, you know, significant boost moving to Slack yep. because we discovered that the people in our business are predominantly under 30 years old. They don't use email. Young people don't use email anymore. They're all messenger based, which is why um, you go to the next step, which is mm-hmm. running your business. You need a good project management system to be able to coordinate people. And you've bridged that gap the closest of any project tool that I've seen. It's, it's something that could be a standalone system. And uh, that's what's pretty exciting about it. And I'll tell you some of the other things that are pretty cool is when you when you get uh, when you start using Depulse, you can certainly use it as a trial, which is what I did. I found I was getting a lot more done in the first even four days that I'd started testing it than uh, than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. And then there's an onboarding call uh, at some point where you can spend yeah. half an hour actually having someone from Depulse go through what you've set up over a screen share and to give you some ideas and tips about how to get more from the tool. And I think showing people how to use the tool is um, tremendous. But one of the surprising things was that I had already figured out the the main things intuitively, and I'm not one to read instruction manuals or watch videos generally. I, I do it for business knowledge, yep. but I don't love doing it for tools. I don't know what that is. but <laughs> it's, it's, it's against the grain of who we are, right, James? It's... <laughs> I, well, I did watch one of the YouTube video style videos that pops up in the tool when I first got it and it was I, I committed to it because it was short and it was easy to understand and I got a couple of good tips from that, just got the gist of it. But from then on, I found it's actually really uh-huh. it's really intuitive the way that you can drag and drop and, and transfer things around and change the, the people and the colors and search for things. So it does have uh, some, it is easy to use basically for the amount of power and the features. It's actually quite easy to use. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if more people start using that as, uh, as the next move after they've already tried one of the other tools that we've mentioned. If they're not feeling like the tool that they're using is doing the job, this would be the starting point uh, if any of the features that we've talked about sound appealing. How did how did it get invented? So Depulse actually came from Wix, which is a company that some of uh, some of every people here might be uh, aware of, which is a you know like a website uh, development kind of a platform that helps making creating websites easier. And what ended up happening there is that uh, you know a, a business without a clear system is going to be chaos. And Wix was not in chaos, but they saw the future coming about how managing all of these different projects and communicating with each other was going to be uh, incredibly different. Uh, It's going to be incredibly difficult, I should say. So they actually, uh, Roy, uh, who is the CEO, they uh, and a few people broke off and started creating this. And Wix was actually 
uh, the first client that we had for Depulse. So they broke off and created this. It started off not looking anything like the way that it is now. And thankfully, we've had so much, so much uh, great people that we've been working with, people you might have heard of like AOL, Discovery, you know, Sachi Art, Samsung, big companies that are working with us. And you've got everybody from the big to the small um, and making these things possible. So it started off as just a like an internal project within Wix. But when we realized that there's actually a, a big shift of what's happening, there's so much changing in this. And I think the reason that you see thousands of different tools is because uh, people are really starting to realize that there is a shift in power. It's not just management who needs to control everything. It's the employees who actually, who actually need to make most of the day-to-day decisions. And I think business owners, once they realize that they're giving their employees the power to make these decisions can actually help them so much. Uh, that's the way that businesses are kind of, like you said, intuitive, like with Pulse. It's kind of the way that the businesses are intuitively going was they understand that when you have good people, they're, they're not going to let it go to chaos. They're going to let it they're going to let it actually evolve and change into something where now that they have the power, they get to make these decisions because they're informed. They're informed about what's going on. So having come from small beginnings, you know, it's it's really amazing to be part of this now because it really is a, it really is a revolution. Um, there's there's thousands of different types of project management applications out there, but uh, so far I only know of one that really focuses on the the human element as the resource rather than just focusing on the project as the most important facet. Nice. Yeah. Well, I can see that's a that's a great thing. A little a spin off out of someone's own need is um, it's actually referred to in uh, the book Simplify as a very great book. Yeah, a really really smart way to to grow a um, a, a strong business with a unique point of difference is to you know cast it off from the the mothership and let it survive on its own two feet. Exactly. Uh, Gave a couple of examples of companies that successfully did that. And some of them, the cast off actually ended up, you know, acquiring the the original mothership. (laughs) So, (laughs) it's like send send off the little space pod to go and find civilization because the spaceship's not going to get there, you know. Exactly. Yep. That's great. Well, it's exciting times. How long has uh, Depulse been around? So it's been publicly available for, I believe, two and a half years, but it's been in the works for just over four. Okay. Well, I'm glad that it's up and running. Um, I can see it having a bright future. Certainly, uh, I've been enjoying using it. And the main thing I wanted to do is just to uh, basically bring this sort of idea to our audience. So I want, cer- Certainly, I'm excited about the tool. And secondly, uh, I wanted to just reinforce that you can't grow your business or scale without a tool like this mm-hmm. and just to finish up i think it'd be kind of cool to talk about a couple of the things that you see people doing with project management or task management tools that you wish you could sort of tap them on the shoulder and say hey there's a better way or or you know have you thought about doing it this way i'd love to know if there's any sort of rookie mistakes or common problems that you see over and over again when you're sorting someone out with how to use it better? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, that's a great question because I, when you mentioned having that setup call, uh, that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. I love getting out in front of the customers and actually showing them how this works. So when you guys uh, do sign up, if you have questions, that's going to be me that you're going to be speaking to. And in regards to some tips and tricks for people using the tool, the one thing that I notice, and this this was a shift in mindset for myself, and so it's not just it's not just you, uh, as far as I'm talking to the listener. It's a it's a really big change in the mindset to to not necessarily just view it as a board in one way. What you really want to try and look at it as is you need to look at the process as a whole and visualize. So there's so many times where people will come to me and say, I don't think I can do this. And then if we take a different spin on it, it turns out that we absolutely can. So for example, well, I was talking to somebody just yesterday and the issue that they were having was that they needed to be able to, they were working with uh, insurance actually out in Melbourne. And so they were trying to figure out how they can get all of their different processes. And they were thinking about it like they did in Excel because they had come from Excel and they had used it that way. And so they were trying to visualize and make, they were literally just trying to replicate it inside the pulse. But one of the biggest problems that they were having was that they wouldn't know when somebody else actually had the information that they needed to move on to the next stage. 
So there were so there were there were all these different projects and all these different people involved in these projects. But once it actually went from phase one to phase two, there was a big gap there. And so what we ended up doing was we would actually go in and create reminders based off of their date columns, which they were setting up. And so people would actually have this integrated into their calendar. So they would be aware of these things. But also we met, we ended up setting up a new process for them, which I just called pass the baton. So whenever the application came in and got approved by their underwriters, I, it, I kind of helped them set up this new process where once that was done and somebody actually changed it to done, they would actually go in and follow up with a quick app mention, which is something you can do inside Depulse. So they would get an instant email and also a push notification. They would go in there and actually kind of pass the baton in that way. And suddenly things were just getting done like wildfire because now instantly when that was taken care of, they had this new process where it's, you know, hey, Jim, is this done? Yes, it is. Okay, great. I'm going to move on. And then they they take the responsibility from there. And then another thing that that people often tend to miss uh, in regards to the tool is, is it can even be simple things. I, I find people struggling sometimes with imagining a high level board. So when you first come in, obviously, uh, you see that big plus button and, and the world's your oyster, right? But if you think about having a high level overview wherein you can look at all of your project at once, and then you have actual specific boards based on those projects, that's great for not only the manager or the CEO to go in and look at the high level items, but you can actually go in and search for those things to see the high level items in relation to tasks. So what that changes is instead of having just a place where you go in and dump everything, you actually have two areas where you can focus on working. You have your what we like to call like a weekly task area where everybody who's in that team focuses on what to do that week and they break it out that way. But then once they've accomplished certain goals for themselves for that week, they go in and they update a high level board which actually gives them the opportunity and everybody in the business to see exactly where a project is at any phase. Uh, those are really kind of some of the big things that I see people missing is just really trying to think about it a little bit differently instead of thinking about it as just a one way vision where you go from left to right. There's so much more complexity, as we were discussing earlier, for what you can do there. So you can have it be visualized in your other applications if you wanted to have date columns and sync things up that way. Or you could even change up your internal business processes very small in small ways where it helps centralize that communication. And I think that's the biggest part of what makes this so valuable, at least for me, is the fact that all the communication happens in context. You know, how many times have you gotten an email from somebody and you had to scroll down through pages and pages and pages of items and you're like, what in the, what in the heck's going on? I don't understand where, what is this even in relation to? And that's really big for me is the communication in context. You mentioned earlier, all the chat you can have on one task, but you can even have it on a general item where if you have stuff on your board and you want to just know what's going on in that board, you can even create a pulse or a task where all the general conversation goes. And so people are actually using this to centralize their communication. And for us internally, we've actually replaced internal email altogether. I can't remember the last time I ever got an email from somebody inside to Pulse. We all go through our individual departments and talk to each other there, or we actually have kind of meta areas where we talk about things like sales, like marketing, onboarding, user issues, and things like that. So I think the if I had to boil it down into one thing, I guess it would be try to take something that you know and then just spin it a little bit to take a, a look at a different angle. Because when you look at it at a different angle, there's so many more opportunities that open up. And the biggest one, I think, would be having things on a, a macro level and then a micro level where you really understand what's going on overall and then for each individual task. That's fantastic advice. So just in, um, in summary, to, to wrap this up, Matthew, what would be the first board that you create when you sign up for a, a uh, any sort of project system, and hopefully to pulse. But let's say you you get your account, you open it up. What's your first board? Absolutely, that is a wonderful question. I've actually created some videos uh, specifically for this, and you guys can see those on our YouTube channel. I'll send you a link so that you guys have access to that. But when you first come in, the thing that I recommend doing is having your high level board and starting there, because once you have that the vision for everything else starts to come in place intuitively, just like you said. So once you know and you have all of your projects in one place and they're visual, you can actually see where they are in relation to how far along they are in the process from start to finish, then you start to see, okay, 
I, I, if I've got a website set up and I'm doing SEO for this client, I know now that I actually need to get the, the budget approved and to set up the kickoff call. So I can go in there and actually create these different boards in relation to those big projects. And I have my high level board where everything goes. And then I've got my individual tasks where I can monitor those things. So when somebody first gets started, I immediately say, all right, let's take a, let's take a macro view. Let's look at your projects as a whole. Let's get them into the platform. Because once you start actually getting in and start switching things from from start to done, or, or you have stuff moving along through the process and you see it happen, the other pieces start to fall into place. So that high level board, I feel like, is extremely critical. Nice. Okay. Well, well there you go. Thank you. Uh, we've been listening to Matthew Burns from depulse.com. And we have a special for listeners. So I'll put that special at superfastbusiness.com where you see the Depulse review. And uh, I want to just thank you for coming along and sharing these great ideas, Matthew. I am so happy to do it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, like I said, I've been a longtime listener. You've provided so much value, so I'm happy to, to come here and contribute. And uh, if anybody does uh, sign up and, and need some help in particular, I am more than happy to work with you either by Skype or by phone, whatever we can do to help you guys get started. That's in, uh, incredibly generous, and I thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com. Thank you.